Creative Brain Candy by Creators for Creators. People break down into two groups. When they experience something lucky, group number one sees it as more than luck, more than coincidence. They see it as a sign. Evidence that there is someone up there watching out for them. Group number two sees it as just pure luck. A happy turn of chance. I'm sure the people in group number two are looking at those 14 lights in a very suspicious way. For them, this situation is a 50-50. Could be bad. Could be good. But deep down, they feel that whatever happens, they're on their own. And that fills them with fear. Yeah, there are those people. But there's a whole lot of people in the group number one. And they see those 14 lights. They're looking at a miracle. And deep down, they feel that whatever's going to happen, there'll be someone there to help them. And that fills them with hope. See, what you have to ask yourself is what kind of person are you? Are you the kind that sees signs, sees miracles? Or do you believe that people just get lucky? Or look at the question this way. Is it possible that there are no coincidences? One and welcome to Smoking and Drinking in Space. This is a sci-fi podcast from a couple guys who think they know sci-fi. And this week, we watched the movie that made us all start to ask, why did we like M. Night Shyamalan again? Starring Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, Rory McCulkin, and Abigail Breslin, it's 2002's Signs. But first, he's the weather-worn father turned farmer to my younger, handsomer, and much dumber brother. It's James. How are you doing, James? Well, at least you admitted you're dumber. And I'm okay being Mel Gibson, man. Like this is this is pre yep. anti Semitic Mel Gibson. Yeah, let, 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 let's put that caveat on it. You you don't mind being pre <laughs> gone fucking off the rocker Mel Gibson. Right, but although his beard now is glorious. Yeah, he, he does have, have a pretty thing? epic beard, or he did at one yeah. point, yeah. Yeah. And he's the little girl who has problems with tap water for no apparent reason. It's Rob. How are you doing, Rob? You mispronounced uh, the director's name. It's M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong. (laughs) That's not accurate. Sorry. Sorry. No, it is, because that's how I feel about his movies. Spoiler. Uh, 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 Wait, 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 wait. Okay, look. So he's had some shit movies. Yeah, he has. The Village. Quite a few. That was a bad movie. Quite a few. What, What was? The Village. Uh, I've never seen it because I don't watch shit shows. No, but you watched this one. <laughs> this is not a shit show. It's not a and shit show, but this is definitely when his movies started to decline. And he's only like three movies in at this point. I was well, bored. Yeah. Like he peaked with uh, Sixth Sense. Like, let's just all be honest. Uh, I think he peaked with Unbreakable. Unbreakable. So fucking good, though. Yeah, you're right. That's probably where he peaked. Although, did you watch the... Whatever the one is, it's in the same universe, and now they're thinking about doing a third. Not thinking, it's the, done. Yeah, there are already three out. It's um, are there Unbreakable, Split, this? and um, Glass. Glass, yeah. Why have I not watched Glass yet? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing tonight. Because you don't watch shit shows? Oh, is it that bad? <laughs> no, I have no idea. I just yeah, I haven't seen Glass either. Oh, well, it's I not on the that. list. I've seen so. Split. I don't remember a lot about it because I think I got kind of distracted doing other stuff. I think it kind of drags for a little bit. It's not a Were bad you movie. Touching yourself? I think um no. Uh I think what's his face uh Professor Xavier did a pretty good job in it, but um it wasn't as good as Unbreakable. I am curious to see Glass. I want to see how he brings everything together, but that's an entirely different fucking 
show. So let's uh, let's move on and see what's happening around CBC this week. BGA is covering The Witcher Three. Uh, so if uh, if you've played that or haven't played that in a while or looking forward to playing that during a quarantine time, uh, I know Caden over at the at, at BGA has been live streaming some stuff. He's doing kind of an interesting build where he's not using Geralt's melee weapon at all. It's all spells, and he's got a special build that's basically way OP, um, but it's all magic. So go check that out. Uh, Drunkenomics covered the debt to GDP ratio this past week, uh, so check that out. It was uh, it was actually a really good show. They they did a pretty good explanation on that. And spoiler, they die is going to release their third part of the Robert Picton coverage this Monday. So they release on Mondays. I said Thursday. I had them and BGA confused last week. I apologize, Cat. I have corrected it this week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we never get an apology. Why does she get an apology? Because she's got tits. No, That's that bullshit. has nothing to do with it. She's Canadian? No. Um, she hates <laughs> Rob's running out James. of things. To do. <laughs> because I like her me. and I don't like you two. So. Oh, fuck. Oh, well, that's, that's fine. <laughs> uh, Rob, you got any news for us this week? I've got a few. Uh, let's see. Let's start with Hellraiser. Okay. Like Hellraiser? I don't know. Um, apparently, HBO is developing a Hellraiser TV show. Why? Why? Uh, because they can. Okay. I, I don't. Uh, why do people think that just because they can do something that they should do something? Yeah, those things don't really go together all that often. Well. Go tell the people at HBO that uh, they need to not do that then. I would have thought they learned their lesson when they did The Watchmen. Uh, no, The Watchmen was actually pretty good. Uh, whatever. Did you watch it? No, I don't watch shit shows. It's not a shit this. show. Uh, it's not what I've heard. From who? Uh, people's whose opinion I trust. And you oh, can give me your not opinion. Yours. Yeah, but it, you're not in. <laughs> you're in group B. Yeah, uh, the Watchman was actually of, pretty fucking good. There's there's two groups of people in the world, Jason. In the first group, there are those whose opinion I trust, and in the second group, there are those whose opinion I don't trust. Do you feel comforted? What else you Nobody got, Rob? Really, oh, fucking everybody! That's a line from fucking signs. Everybody could you, you two could eat dicks, both of you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I must have fallen asleep during that part of the movie. But that's okay. Moving on. <laughs> uh, let's see. I fucking hate you, Rob. Monday. Monday, which is tomorrow for us or two days ago for everybody else that's listening to this. See, Stop I threw doing some time t- travel. No, no, no. I had to get it in there. Um, Disney Plus is going to have Rise of the Skywalker early. So, yay. Woo. I don't watch shit shows. No, that's not true. You watched it. You liked I, it. I'm not watching it again. You had to watch it. You liked you called it. called it good. I did like it. Out of uh-huh. the, all of the now saga, you're it's it the shit? third best. But you know what? That's a really low fucking bar, isn't it? Uh, well, you can't have it both ways. You can't like it and say it's a shit show. Yeah. Oh, I can. I can. I absolutely can. It is that's the like third saying, best. It is the bur- third best out of all of, of the Skywalker you've ever saga. Had? You've no. <laughs> Because the first two are so amazing and the rest of them are so shit. It just is. I have zero desire to watch it again. You're going to watch it again. I'm not. I won't. <laughs> yeah, you will. No. no. Yeah, you will. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Yep. Mm-mm. Nope. All right. You two. Yep. Fucking no. eight-year-olds. Move on. Uh-uh. You're an eight-year-old. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you, you opened I'm yourself up for that you. one. I'm not touching you. Uh, All right. So this is not sci-fi directly, but it's sci-fi related. Um, And James will enjoy this. Is it corn based? Uh, Almost. Is it Christina Hendricks based? (laughs) It is. Uh, Happy birthday to Christina Hendricks. She turned 45. 
I got well, her a little something. I'm got sorry. Her a little something, something. She will turn 45. It she is a little turned. something, something. It is a little something, something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very little. So, yeah, shout out to uh, uh, James's imaginary girlfriend. Um, happy There's birthday. no imaginary about it, sir. We have yet to see pictures. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen any evidence yet. Yeah. Look, she's pictures asking, or it like, didn't happen. She's asked me to keep it on the down low. You're doing a so great yeah. job. Yeah, you're Thanks, doing buddy. very good. Very good. <laughs> the quarantine's helping you. Is that what it, it is? It really is. It really it is. is. Yeah. It's, yeah. Works in my favor right now. <laughs> right now it does. So that's all I got. All right. It's kind of a, kind of a light day this week. Cool. Well, before we get to the pod crawl, I did want to uh, put out an announcement. So uh, Creative Brain Candy is is looking for creators that want to join the cooperative. If you're a creator, whether it be fine art, writing, podcasting, music, or video, and you want to join the cooperative, then just reach out to us at creativebraincandy.com forward slash apply, or you can go out to creativebraincandy.com and click the apply link at the upper right-hand corner of the menu. What if they've got a cooking show? No. Well, if, actually, yeah. If, if we the, need yes, one. if if the cooking oh, show one? is is okay. yeah, if, if they have a cooking show they want to put out on the on the co-op, then yeah, absolutely, perfect. Hey, how'd perfect. your taint bread turn out? Uh, yeah, we haven't heard anything. Yeah, no, so I'm gonna have to try it again. Um, something happened in the <laughs> leavening process. It didn't turn out <laughs> great. Killed, it was edible, but it didn't. Uh, I I did something in the in either the folding process or something happened. It didn't. It didn't rise correctly. You had flat sourdough. It wasn't flat actually, but it was. <laughs> it, it was, was extra tainty. It was kind of weird because <laughs> no, it, it tasted actually pretty good, but the way the way it cooked in the oven, when you pulled it out, it looked like it cooked correctly, but then you cut it and the cross section was this humongous bubble at the bottom and all of the dough had been pushed up and it was real dense on top. It was just so fucking weird. It was like basically hollow with all the dough pushed up at the top. I don't know what happened. I'm going to have to try it again. I think I screwed up the folding process or something. I can send you some more taint yeast. No, no, no. I've, I've still got my starter going. I'll, I'll Maybe your starter isn't any good. Did you yeah, add enough taint? I, yeah. Was there enough taint in the yeast? <laughs> yeah. I think the starter is okay. You sure? I, yeah, I'm not positive, you- but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Have you asked it if it's okay? I yeah, more on that later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who's ready for a pod crawl? Oh, Let's do please. It. We can call it, I don't know, say a pod crawl. The pod crawl. Pod crawl. Pod crawl. Pod crawl. Excellent. Insert it deep. Pod crawl. Kind of like a space suppository full of information. Martin Riggs is an aged homicide detective who's a little off his rocker. Especially when he dreams that he wakes up in a Pennsylvanian farmhouse with the exact opposite personality. The screaming outside and Riggs, who's dreaming he's Graham, runs out to investigate. It seems he's a corn farmer, or at least is surrounded by corn, and is running through the rows like a young James full of glee and whimsy. Riggs comes to a clearing in the corn where he sees his two small children staring at a large round shape in the middle of his cornfield. Let's call it something clever, like a produce ellipse. Amazed by the remarkable feat it would take to create a produce ellipse of such magnitude, the family heads back to the house to have a cookout. In the meantime, the dogs are freaking out, so Riggs' son decides to put a knife in its chest. Problem solved. That night, Riggs catches sight of Batman on the roof of his barn and gets his brother Merrill, who named these people, to help him chase the bat around the house. <laughs> but Batman can't be caught that easily and runs out into the cornfield to go fight corn-based crimes. The next day, Riggs calls the sheriff in to report the vigilante crawling all over his rooftops, and she says it may actually be Scandinavian Batwoman, you chauvinist, but definitely not a midget because Scandinavians are tall. What the fuck is this movie going on about? Anyway, after a trip to town to eat pizza and stare at the only brown person in the area getting groceries, they get home where they start getting a strange signal on the baby monitor. Merrill, who knows a lot about the secret life of nerds, helps his nephew raise the monitor up so they can get a good signal to catch their favorite alien jam. That night, Riggs heads outside to see what has the dog, the one that's still alive, all worked up and sees rustling in the corn. Fearing the movie might be transitioning to a Stephen King novel, he heads out with his flashlight to investigate. 
After yelling into the darkness and trying to convince the dog there's nothing out there, he gets his first shaky cam glimpse at a real life, something. He sprints out of the cornfield, somehow not dying of blood loss from a thousand tiny cuts, and heads inside to find the news is reporting lights over Mexico City. They record the broadcast over Merrill's spank bank for posterity, and later, with the kids asleep on the couch, they have a very binary philosophical discussion about luck, faith, causality, and fatalism. Riggs lost his faith after his wife died, Merrill gained his after not getting puked on. The next morning, Riggs wakes up late to discover his brother is watching mangy Bigfoot porn in the closet and it's theorized that the produce ellipses are navigational devices used by the aliens. Because life forms from outer space who traveled light years to get here don't have GPS, seems legit. Anyway, Riggs heads out to talk to the guy who killed his wife because he thinks he prank called him, and that's the line you just don't cross. When he gets there, they guy says he's heading to the lake and that Riggs should probably not grab a can of soup from the pantry because he trapped an alien inside. Riggs heads inside, because why not, and takes a few alien fingers as a souvenir to show his kids. Feeling the impending doom set on him by the news coverage of major cities being hovered by flying saucers, Riggs pulls a trick from the death row playbook and gets everyone's last meal request. After a recreation of a typical American Thanksgiving dinner complete with I hate yous and hugs, they hold themselves in the basement while the aliens ransack the place. The next morning, it seems everything is good. The invasion has been beaten back, by who knows what, and they have all retreated. Except the one that Riggs took a few fingers from. That one tracks down Riggs and threatens his kid, so Riggs tells his brother to beat it like the Astros beat on trash cans, and then rushes his son outside for a quick adrenaline shot. The alien is beaten and drenched, the boy is brought back from the dead, and roll its summer on one side of the house and winter on the other, but Riggs has found his faith again. Credits. All right. First, fuck the Astros. <laughs> Second, that was an amazing pie crawl. Well, thank you. I was complimenting the hot British chick that read it. Oh. Not you. Not me. Yeah. Okay. Not no. you. I appreciate it. Good job, hot British chick. If you could sound more like Christina Hendricks, you would uh, make James's life complete. If we could get <laughs> Christina Hendricks to read one pod crawl. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. That would be amazing. I don't see that ever I, happening. Ever. Yeah, and ever. I think she'd stop halfway through it and say, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it'd have to be a movie that she's in. Just yeah, yeah, be, for sure. Yeah, man, has she yeah. been in any other sci-fi other than Serenity? Does it matter? Or not yeah, even Serenity? It was Firefly. She wasn't even in Serenity. Yeah, Again, it does it matter. matter? Well, if it's a movie that she's been in, and we cover sci-fi, then it would. We have can to just be. redo it. Yeah, look for this one episode that Christina yeah, Hendricks we'll has so graciously uh, agreed to read topless. Uh, that wait, wait, uh, whoa, that just, we're gonna whoa, what? wait, whoa. Oh, I'm sorry, that I, was my inner monologue. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> damn. Yeah, that, that 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 inside voice went outside. Yeah, well, that happens. All right, so this movie, M. Night Shyamalan, has made a, a name for himself by 2002 as. Uh, having his twist ending. So it started with The Sixth Sense, his first uh, big movie, and, and that was quite a, quite a sensation. I mean, nobody nobody really saw the ending uh, that, that well, happened. I haven't there. either. I haven't seen that movie. Well, I'm going to spoil it for you. He sees dead people, <laughs> Wait. and Bruce Willis oh. is a dead person. So, Well, shit, I guess we're not going to put that on our list. Yeah, that movie is you know well over 20 years old, so sorry to spoil that for you. It's okay. I've seen it. It's fine. Um, and then Unbreakable uh, was his his next that was a good one. up to bat with uh, Bruce Willis again. And that was a good one. And it turns out that uh, Bruce Willis is uh, basically in, invincible, except, uh, except when it comes to his arch nemesis, who is basically really not invincible. Everything hurts him. He, he can't swim. Well, that, yeah, he can't swim. He needs to learn how to swim. He really does learn to swim, as the Reverend Maynard James Keenan would say. I mean, as a as an Achilles heel, that's kind of a stupid Achilles heel, right? <laughs> <laughs> even even people who d- can't swim can float. That's not true. Is he a witch? People are no, that's not. Oh Jesus! Here we go. <laughs> That's just that's patently not true. There are people who are deathly afraid of water. They can't swim. When they get in, they 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 thrash around like fucking morons 
And then they sink to the bottom and die. And that's just chlorine in the gene pool. Learn to fucking swim. Well, okay, but oh, yeah. that doesn't preclude them from not freaking the fucking out and and floating. If they have a phobia of it, I don't know. I am not a doctor. I am not a medical doctor. I don't even play a doctor on TV. But if you have a phobia of something, I would imagine that that's going to probably, uh, you know, contribute to you thrashing around like a fucking moron in water. Again, not... Not really related to swimming, right? That's that's a phobia of a the phobia, water. But if he has a phobia of water, look, I'm guessing, again, not a medical doctor, uh, that Superman probably has a kryptonite phobia. Uh, okay. You think? Probably. Yeah. Wouldn't you, if there's only one thing in the on the face of God's green earth that can kill you, and you know it, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you have a phobia of it? No. There's a I ton would. of fucking shit on God's green earth that can kill me, and I don't have phobias of them. Oh, I have phobias of all of it. Heights, uh, snakes, snakes on a plane. Uh, Samuel L. So Jackson. Those are two separate phobias, <laughs> snakes and snakes yeah. on a plane? Well, yes. Yeah, because now yeah. you're you're high in the air and there are snakes. Oh, like, God. fuck that. Yeah. yeah. Touche, touche. Yeah. Uh, my first question about this movie because he's kind of he's he's definitely starting to lose his edge with this movie um because i don't know if it was and i remember this whenever i first saw the movie back whenever it released in 2002 you kind of figured out what their achilles heel was going to be which was water really early on because he foreshadowed that shit so fucking much i mean well the i mean he did as an actor too. Oh yeah. Which is like, Hey, the director and the writer is basically telling you how to kill them. Yeah. In the movie. But even before that, um, Hmm. Abigail Breslin's character, Bo, Bo was her name. Bo with her weird tap water drinking. It's all contaminated. Uh, Okay. Hold on. Just, it's all contaminated. let's, let's, Let's just hold on a second here. It's got amoebas in it. Okay. First, my my first question to you two ass clowns is, do you guys try to break down every fucking movie and ruin the ending for yourselves before the end? No, that's just Jason. Yeah, that's okay. just me. Well, yeah, that's, I, th- that's, I don't. That's, you know what? That's now my third phobia because it's just stupid. My, the second thing is, is you've had toddlers. You know how toddlers are. They don't fuck it. They do fucking weird shit. Nope. It's got to be this glass or this plate and it's got to be this. It's got to be cut this way. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. Or they're not going to fucking eat it. They're not going to drink it. They're not going to do whatever. So, no. For me, it was not. Even even when this movie released in 2002 as a young man, uh, 18 years ago, uh, I so was 45 like. 45 then? Yeah, I'm about 45. Uh, okay. I was like, that. okay, well, this makes sense. I wasn't trying to break it down and go, oh, man, there's foreshadowing. Oh, my God. I didn't care. You didn't even know what that word meant back then. I can't. I still don't know what it means. And I can't spell it. And it doesn't matter. Because I wasn't doing it. I didn't care. I was just enjoying the movie. I was enjoying the story telling, which is what a movie does. Yeah, but the storytelling story. wasn't that great in this movie either. You enjoyed this ah, movie as a kid? I, I, I did enjoy this movie uh, when it first came out. I enjoyed it actually quite a bit. I enjoyed Ooh. the themes that it dealt with. I enjoyed the, the crisis of faith uh, and how uh, faith and science can coexist. Uh, I enjoy. I, I enjoyed this movie to, uh, a lot. I thought it was really good. And then this was the last movie from him that I enjoyed. Yeah, this was the first time I've seen it. Um, really? Yes. How do you wow. dodge yes, that yes. bullet? We we talked about this in the last. Do you not listen to our show? No, I don't. I don't just listen not. to you. Yeah, yeah we, I was gonna say, it's just, not, it's just uh, you we don't listen to. I got gotcha. you. There, there's a special track that you guys listen to where I'm cut out completely. I don't even know how the audience. Here's you because we cut your track out completely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I basically what put, I just uh, said the soundtrack to Alvin and the Chipmunks on your track. <laughs> <laughs> well, at and least not even the Christmas album, just some kind of one off fucking. Yeah. It's just dumb album clips from did. the fucking cartoon. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Which one am I? Not Alvin. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, yeah. First time <laughs> I've seen this. Um, I wish. I wish I hadn't seen it. Uh, I wasn't impressed. 
Well, it how were you slow. not impressed? It was too slow. <laughs> oh um, it was slow. It's very slow. Um, I mean, I, okay. So that's I not was, necessarily a bad thing. There's plenty of movies that uh, I like that have a slow burn. Yeah, but this one, this one was really slow. It wasn't um, slow. I mean, it wasn't uh, fast paced. There was no action. Well, no, it was, but it was, okay. it was set up. But here, but you go and you look on, you go and look on Wikipedia, holder of all knowledge. Um, oh, Jesus. Signs is toted as being a science fiction horror film. So yes. I was expecting some more horrorish type stuff, especially from Shamalama Ding Dong. I think um, horrorish or horror. Horrorish, right. Either like, which, one would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you didn't get any of that. I, I mean, there, there wasn't, there wasn't a single thing in there that made me jump or made me scared or made me creeped out or anything like that. I Okay, well, I take that back. There was one time, and that one time is when uh, dumbass Joaquin Phoenix goes up the stairs from the basement, and he's not carrying the axe that they just took out of the door. I'm like, that is a good way to get yourself killed. Right. That was the dumbest thing. Oh, let's walk around without any implements. Well, there weren't yeah. teenagers having sex. Well, it doesn't matter. So, uh, like, the, that's well, but this isn't a slasher film. Well, like, okay, yeah. yeah, but but any sane person, I don't care if you're a man of the cloth or ex man of the cloth or whatever, any sane person is going to have something to do some violence. Ex man of the cloth. That sounds uh, that sounds like a cool crossover. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. But you know, I mean, anybody's going to have something to protect themselves with or grab something, you know, but no, no, I don't. Okay. So you, <laughs> so would you no. go up the stairs? No, would you he go up the stairs. To fucking die. The, up the, until the point when the aliens started to come in and he said, no, I'm not ready. He didn't fucking care. He was okay. Dying. Meryl was okay. Dying. Not Meryl, but... Uh, Meryl's the one that went up the stairs first. Yeah. Well, Meryl's an idiot. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're not a good baseball player if all you want to do is hit dingers. <laughs> you're just, right. He wasn't hitting dingers. He was he was striking out. He held no, he five hit, records. Yeah, he had five minor league records for home runs. Yeah, and then he had a sixth one that was for the most strikeouts ever in the history of all time. <laughs> like right, more yeah. than any two players combined. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So all he did is swing. go up yeah. there and swing, swing it like he was swinging an axe. Swung so at no, everything. So why didn't he the grab the axe guy. and head up there? He's not the smartest guy on the fucking planet. Like that's the okay. whole point of this. He's dumb. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if he went swinging at every fucking pitch. Why they ever pitched to him? Why did he have five fucking home run <laughs> right? records? Why would they ever fucking pitch to him? Well, because that goddamn could ball would out. be in the fucking dirt or above his chin every fucking time. Well, because you could you could strike him out. Like he probably he wasn't very just good. hit fastballs and hanging yeah. curves, and that's it. Yeah. So you just, just yeah. you can probably you he struck out more than he hit home runs. Yeah, but you, you you I mean the way they made it sound, it sounded like he never saw a ball he liked. Like he never fucking took a ball. He never saw a ball he didn't like. Didn't like. Yeah. No, like a ball, like a pitch. Oh, like a like an outside of the. I'm guessing he did, and that's probably how he got a lot of strikeouts. Is that he would just swing at anything? Right. And so if he's gonna swing at anything, I'm not putting on. anything down the fucking pipe. Well, every once in a while you did. I don't fucking know. It's minor league. How <laughs> how much fucking scouting are these minor league teams doing? 18 years ago, are they. Minor leagues had farm leagues back then. I mean, they, that's right. Uh, it but it hasn't changed probably, that much in twenty years. He wasn't triple A. He was he was most definitely double A. And is there anything below double A? Yeah, there's uh, A A yeah, high okay, school. Well, there you go. High school. <laughs> high school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's minor league. So little league. Like he, he was if, if he's in these super small farm leagues. Like I, I don't think there's a lot of scouting on other teams. It's. Those teams that are that they're part of the the farm system, which has gone away now, which is just sad. Um, what do you mean it's gone uh, away? It's they, Major League Baseball has curtailed it significantly. There's still they're, a minor league system. Nah, you might want to read up on that. 
Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is, but it's not like it was. Not near as heavy as it used to be. It was going to be like that. This year, Major League cut it back quite a bit. There are two minor league teams here in in Iowa that uh, are no more. Well, that's because it's Iowa. Nobody wants to go there. That's not the case. Major League Baseball is no longer supporting. Uh, They'll support some AAA teams, but they're not supporting AA anymore. Really? So, yeah. Like, I didn't... I, I Are the Rough Riders still in Frisco? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. And when was the last time you looked? Because this was like a big thing before Rona happened. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Rough Riders. Baseball. Look it up later. It doesn't fucking matter. We're talking about this <laughs> fucking movie. That's, Jesus what, Christ, that's the whole too. point. We don't want to talk about this fucking movie. I do. Uh, I like Frisco, this yep. movie. Frisco Rough Riders. Yep, they're still there. Yeah, well, look up, look up Major League Baseball not supporting uh, farm systems anymore. Okay, not on. to the extent that they were. Major anyway, you can look that up League in your free time because I know you have a lot of free time. supporting <laughs> minor league. Uh, it says, Crowley, you're a dumbass. Oh, you're an idiot. Wow. That's what came I don't up. even know why. That's what I, came I, up. I'll find it, and I'll, you know what? I'll find it. You can put it in the fucking show notes. How's that? Then people we will don't be like, do wow, Crowley notes. was right, and fucking uh, ass clown there was wrong. Do you even know where the show notes are located? <laughs> no. He doesn't. <laughs> he has no idea. What are show notes? Yeah. <laughs> I watch the movie. I come in here, and I tell you what I think. Although I do have Abigail Breslin's IMDb pulled up. Of course you do. Well, no, I wanted to see what she was in. I was like, because I thought to myself, no, no, you're an idiot. I thought to myself, I wonder if she's still acting. And I looked and the first thing that popped up that she was in was Ender's Game. Um, She was in Zombieland 2. Whoa, 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 whoa. You wondered if she was still acting. She just did Zombieland 2. Yeah. I didn't know that, ass clown. I, oh my God. Do you not watch? Have you not seen Zombieland 2? Well, I haven't haven't either. Oh my God. Zombieland Double Tap. Is oh, good? you've got to go see that. We're going to have to go. We're going to have to watch that. All right. I'll watch it. I don't it care. So is it on, much the, is it on the fun. list? Uh, it is, it is a American comedy sci-fi. It's more sci-fi than 11. It is not sci-fi. Guaranteed. Yeah, I, uh, I think it is. Yeah. Guaranteed. Okay. Because you know where uh, the virus came from? Space. Rona? Space spore. No, oh. it's a space spore. Yep. You're so fucking stupid. <laughs> no. You, yeah, no, are you are stupid. <laughs> no, uh, look, no. action, comedy, horror. No, no. Well, horror is sci-fi <laughs> no, adjacent. You yeah, have said sci-fi so yourself. Adjacent, but not so we sci-fi. can do it. Anyway, can we get back to science? Because you two are dumb. no. We don't. We don't want to go back. to <laughs> Why science. am I having to play Jason this episode? Jesus I'm Christ! Really not sure. <sighs> this movie is not that bad. No, this did movie is that horrible. Good. Did, have, did you see what they were doing oh. to the fucking chicken on that grill? He was poking it with a fork. It's a it's a Macaulay a Culkin. Kid. Who cares? Yeah, it was Rory Culkin. What the Macaulay. fuck are they teaching those kids in rural they all Pennsylvania? Look the same. Dude, have you ever been to Pennsylvania? It's like all Amish. So I've just never be glad that they had electricity. Yeah, it didn't work very well. Whatever. It was an old farmhouse. I don't oh, care. A, old farmhouse or not, basement. you don't poke chicken with a fork. You don't grill with a fork. Uh, there shouldn't be a there shouldn't a be a fork. fork within twenty feet of that fucking grill. Okay, oh if they God. didn't grill with the fork, how was he going to s- stab the dog? Hmm? Well, he didn't stab hmm? the dog hmm? with a fork. Hmm? He stabbed the hmm? dog with a knife. No, that was it was no, the grill was fork. The, was that was the, the fork. fork. It was yes, the grill fork. The Did you, you not kill watch a this dog movie? with the grill he fork? Must've, he must he yeah. must have because he didn't get stabbed <laughs> in the chest, he got stabbed in the head in the throat. Right. They're in the throat. Did you not watch Wait, this movie or were you was too it busy the head making the throat? The neck, the neck, the, throat, head the area. Throat. The neck, throat, head area. Jesus Christ. Where the neck moron. and the throat connect oh to my the head. God. I can't even right now with the two of you. Hey, look at me. Look at I me. I don't want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to stay on our on on the not Jason side, okay? You're, <laughs> you got to help me out here. Oh, my God. You're both. Ignorant. This movie is good. Also, no, why the fuck, no. if the alien's weakness is water, why the fuck would they come to a planet whose surface is 70% it fucking was water? in the book. What book? Oh, my God. Did you watch the movie? I did watch the movie. They said in the book. They came that to the harvest. Bought at, well, they went into town. It said that they were coming here. 
or no, it was on the maybe it was on the radio while they were down in the uh, down in the cellar. Regardless, it was said in the movie that they were there to harvest humans. That's what they were there for. They weren't there to, to take resources. They weren't there for anything else. They were harvesting humans. Why? It didn't have to explain it. Jesus. I wanted to know why humans. Maybe we were you know their why? corn. You know why? No, they, they were humans from the future, and they came to, to the past, Rob, uh, to try to kill the next baby See, Hitler. See, now, now I know you're just lying to me and trying to placate to my time travel theories. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to work. Well, it should, because this movie deals with well, some suck. really great... Uh, things that humans as a whole deal with. Like what? And it didn't deal with faith. that in very well. How to, how how to make reconcile- crop circles? Oh, my God. How do you reconcile faith and science? How how do you reconcile uh, uh, faith when bad things happen in uh, in the world? Uh, is, there, is, there, is there such a thing as God or fate? Or is it all just coincidence? Is it all just luck? Is it all just, like, there are issues that See, this movie deals with, and I think in a very brilliant in human way. Really? How? Because based on I, your background, you are rose colored glassy in this thing. I don't think that's this movie at all. Mm-hmm. touched mm-hmm. on some of those aspects. It didn't deal with any of it. It well, had sure it, it had a very binary fucking view when he, of all of that. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm okay with that because people are dumb. And so people need that binary. <laughs> like, well, let's not give people too many options here because they'll go, uh so dealing with things in a binary way, I'm okay with. But they didn't even really it, deal with it. They they touched on it for what three minutes in, in the, the movie scene when he's in the cellar and his kid is and Rory Culkin is having that asthma attack, and he says, "I hate you." He's talking to God. Yeah, like everybody and? goes through that. Everybody has anybody of faith has that crisis of faith has that moment where you are so angry. So I, I, I guess maybe I just empathize with it a little bit where you two uh, ask clowns with, with like, yeah, whatever. Movie dumb. Derp a derp. Binary. Burp a derp a derp. <laughs> yeah, that's exact. It's like you were sitting right next to me as I was watching this movie. You not, captured the entire essence of what I was doing. Yeah. No. <laughs> God, damn. I, it yeah, was, I, I mean, it I, even yeah, cheapened look. itself. Whenever they I were, whenever they were talking about fatalism and causality, whenever they were trying, whenever his brother was trying to get him to figure out or trying to figure out why he had lost his faith or uh, determine if uh, aliens coming down was some sort of miracle, I mean, he cheapened it himself. He said, "I have faith because a girl at a party didn't fucking puke all over me. That was my miracle." Oh yeah, but okay. So again, I'm going to go back to Merrill is. An idiot. He is an idiot. Like, okay, he was written to be an idiot. He is the he is the dumb jock. He is the guy that doesn't understand these issues, and he looks to his brother to help him understand it. And so he has to break it down to him like he's a fucking moron because he's a fucking moron. It's like trying to explain things. To Rob, you should empathize with this, Jason. <laughs> in in some ways, I do, but I mean that that, that also brings up the wow. question of did uh, Riggs actually lose his faith, or was he just pissed off at at God? Because oh, no, he, I, he, he he came he, back around at the end whenever his uh, whenever his son was having that asthma attack. Oh, he didn't come back until it Not all until, made sense to him. He didn't come back until uh, yeah, until his son. Okay, you don't you don't being say to God I hate poisoned. you and not still have a belief in God. Oh wow. 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 Somebody needs to read the book of Job. What? Okay, we need to move on. What this are you is talking not, about? This is the not book sci-fi. of Job. <laughs> yeah, I know I know the thing. story of Job. Okay, it does this. He at one at at, at the very end before he re- get, he loses his faith. Like he gets right to the edge, just like he did. And he's like, I hate you. And then it all starts to make sense. And it's only when you reach that precipice, when you are looking on the side of the cliff and you're like, there is no God. I was wrong. And then something snaps you back. 
For Job, it was a literal conversation with God, and it was pretty one-sided. Uh, and for for Riggs, it was, uh, you know, Montauk didn't uh, retire. Uh, uh, no, wrong movie. It, for Riggs, it was uh, his, I was like, Montauk? What the fuck? We, said, got, we went back to Eternal Sunshine. Martok? Murtaugh. Murtaugh? Murtaugh. Murtaugh? Murtaugh. I don't fucking remember. How many years have I has Riggs it been since I've seen a fucking... Lethal Weapon. It's not even a Christmas movie. Die Hard, on the other hand, that's a Christmas movie. Lethal Weapon I mean, is more Bruce of Will. a fucking Christmas movie than Die Hard ever will be. Lethal Weapon's more sci-fi than Eleven Twenty Two Sixty Three. Well, that may it's be true. too, but <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so it's only when you read. So it was. It was. It clicked. He was like, wait. He was allowed to have the panic attack, or the not the panic attack, but the asthma attack, so that his lungs were closed, so that he didn't die from the poison when the alien poisoned him. Really? Because I and thought so he then, had a uh, asthma attack because he got scared shitless and forgot his medication. <sighs> Rob. Yeah. I swear on all that is decent and holy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> is there an over under for this? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. Because I no, I don't think I tell you nearly as much as I told Austin. Oh, that's for a fact. Yeah. 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 Uh, so no, I mean, the, everything happens for a reason. There are no coincidences. It's, it's the same. It's the argument that he made when he was trying to comfort, comfort his brother is that there are no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. And he had lost that. And then it all started to make sense. Well, he, and, he, he was saying that and, some and, and people he, believe that. Well, now he believes it again. Right. And, but did he ever really stop believing it? That's oh, my absolutely. question. I think you did. I don't think so. Yeah, when he said, I hate you, when he said, I hate you, I, he, that was the moment where he absolutely 100% lost it because he thought his kid was in so much danger uh, up until when he, he got the epinephrine pin uh, that, yeah, I think uh, he, 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 he had lost his faith at that point. Uh, he lost his wife in a pretty uh, traumatic way. Right, which... Was a whole thing. Yeah. I'm not even going to go into that because I think that's all bullshit too, but whatever. Actually, actually I got a question on that. Wait, 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 wait. What do you think? What's all bullshit? There is no fucking way she would be crushed against a goddamn tree and still be conscious. Yeah. That's happened. Yeah. Where? Yeah. yeah. With oh, your yeah. Low, lower, lower extremities being crushed. Yeah. 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 100% that's happened. Yeah. It can happen. Okay. Now. You're going to have to, you're going to have to come up with proof of that because I don't believe that bullshit. Uh, where people get, have, where people have a crush injury that takes out their lower half of their body and they're still alive? No, not still alive, they, still conscious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you, because yes, yes, because because it severs a spot in your spine and then you feel nothing down there and it's still massive you're crushed, trauma. You're going to be no, in fucking if, shock. No, no, she if was. You're she was not all. Of, she was not one hundred percent. Been there. in shock. Have, have you? you? Yes. I want to hear this story because this story from a crush injury. No, not from a fucking crush injury. You well, can then be in you shock don't know. You're being in a crush injury. You're not. You are not a medical doctor. Oh, last God, time damn. I checked. So, when were you in shock? No, I want to hear this story. Shut up, Rob. I've when been in shock a few different times. I've had several injuries when that have saw put me into a shock naked? state. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, that's that, everyone in shock. Yeah. Yeah. I was shocked. Well, he also lost, but he lost a lot of blood to the brain at the same time. So, oh, <laughs> it's all getting woozy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my god. I'm just saying that that that, that does happen. It's ha like it's rare for sure, but there are scenarios that I have heard of throughout my life where this has happened, where you get to have that last conversation but it's it's usually pretty quick and it's got to be done quick because they're not i mean they're not going to last okay so i have a question regarding that accident though all right so so it's an accident it's an auto accident um the person ends up dying wouldn't that be considered manslaughter. involuntary manslaughter which yes. would uh be jail time no well, probably maybe. not jail time it depends on the judge. Yeah, it honestly, depends on the, the prosecutor if they're even going to bring charges. Yeah. Well, he seemed pretty beat up and uh, traumatized by it. I would have thought he would have brought charges. No, no, no. The prosecutor, no, the prosecutor has to bring charges. 
Yeah. It can't be from the person that is related Look, to the murderer. I, and a lot murder? of that de- is dependent on the, it was a murder. It was victim? an involuntary manslaughter. Sorry, victim. He didn't it wasn't mean to a do murder. Was, murder implies yeah. intent. Intent, malice. There was none of that's, that. There's, that's true. And if we care about murder, we should just go listen to STD. Spoiler, they die. Which deals with murder. In. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not manslaughter. It's true. Which is what this was. I know. Involuntary at that. Right. And he no, seemed no pretty upset time? about the whole thing. No jail time. Right. Well, Because he seemed pretty upset about it. It wasn't like he did it. Like he fell asleep and went, oh, well, herp a derp a derp. I'll move on with my life. It was, yeah, I can't believe I did this. Holy shit. Like I know M night. Shalala Malalan is a terrible actor, but I mean, he at least got that across the, the, the guy who did it was, you know, upset about it. Yeah. I want to talk about the acting a little bit because it seemed like everybody in this movie was on Valium. I think that was a, a, a directorial choice. Well, or writing choice. I'm sure it is because I've seen these actors and actresses do other stuff where they're not portraying people that were on Valium. Riggs. Well, Riggs and, uh, you know, Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. That was, it was <laughs> well, definitely yeah, not on Valium yeah. in that. Uh, Abigail or, or Breslin as, the, uh, as Little Rock Emperor. and as who? The Emperor and Gladiator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was good there, too. Yeah, he was. So, I mean, that's a good movie. This had a really good acting cast, but everybody just seemed so fucking bored. Well, it's because they knew they live in Pennsylvania. Be shit. (laughs) I don't know anything about Pennsylvania, so I don't know if that's a bad place to live or not. I'm not going to cast aspersions to Pennsylvania. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, if this movie is representative of Pennsylvania, it's very beautiful and very dull and very corny. Yeah. Is there a lot of corn grown in Pennsylvania? I don't know. Yeah, I know they do. there's tobacco grown there. I don't know if there's any, uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, I maybe. thought you were the corn you, expert. Yeah. I was going to say, you, what do you, you know? You know, you guys keep making me want to say words that I'm not supposed to say on here. Uh, but you two fuckos. Are the only two that do that? Really? Like, you want to say fucko, expert. but what what are the other words that you don't want to say? If right, fucko right. is one that you do, <laughs> things that would uh, words that would get me in trouble that uh, <laughs> that would go towards the, the the combined intelligence of the two of you. Like I'm not sure you two could tie shoes by yourselves. Like I think you're. Oh, we work together. We get it done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have Velcro. <laughs> That's why I Duh. have Velcro. <laughs> Jason's like, I just wear loafers. <laughs> shoes? No. <laughs> no. There are no shoes Sandals? in Texas. Sandals. Cowboy step boots. on fire ants. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> This movie's not that bad. I don't know why the two of you hate this movie so much. I don't you know, hate this, this movie. It's It's okay. It's not a good movie. I mean, it's... It's not the worst thing I've IMDb ever seen. IMDb gives it 6.7 out of 10. I think that's about right. Uh, it might be a little high, but it's not far off the mark. What what what, what, what does Rotten Tomatoes give this? Anybody? Uh, I think it was around a, a 67. It yeah. may have been 65. That's not, it's not a terrible score. There are 74. Certainly worse, 74. Cer- certainly worse movies Is that out there. critics or was that audience? Uh, critics gave it 74. What do audiences give it? I don't that's, know. I'm on one Wikipedia holder of all knowledge and it said Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Audience score is 67. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, that. I, I would agree with that. It's not the best movie on the planet for sure, but it's certainly not the worst. I've seen worse. Uh, and it, they're usually movies and t- television shows that you make me watch. Jason Metropolis. Mm-hmm. Comes to mind. Metropolis is better than this movie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Just just for the historical reference alone or historical uh, significance. You got to back me up here. No, absolutely not. The Metropolis sucks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's terrible. (laughs) Anything is better than Metropolis. A girl throwing up in my mouth while I'm trying to make out with her would be better than Metropolis. Oh, let's put that to the test. Let's test that. Let's find a hot chick. You have a wife. Wait, wait. You I didn't said, say hot, hot chick. chick. You just said girl. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say hot chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did I'm you just gonna... say? Did yes, you just... he did. He wow. did. It's a joke. 
Yeah, it was yeah. Joe. Oh, no, okay. okay. No, she doesn't no. listen to this show. <laughs> oh, we're gonna make she sure she get does an this anonymous episode. tip. No, <laughs> you should listen to episode one hundred and eight. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that. Just get just give her the clip. <laughs> I'll, I'll, fuck. I'll, you want me to call her in here right now and be like, "Hey, I said you weren't hot." No, I don't want to hear your wife voice. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I know you said that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, man, I could text her. Hold Jason's on. wife sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that may be the funniest thing you've ever said, Rob. <laughs> oh, I've had a few others since then. No, you haven't. No, Before no, that. that's, yeah. you know, that's probably the what other funny things have you said? I can't remember them right off the top well, of my head, but I. I've had them. No, I've you haven't. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All Let's right, James, on. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. This movie signs. Uh, with its dealing of aliens and fatalism. Is it more sci fi than 112263? Well, there are people wearing aluminum foil, or as the British say, aluminum foil on their heads. I had it look uh, good. Yeah, they did. And I, at first I was like, is this an Alex Jones episode? Right. And then. Uh, there were aliens. Hello. So yes, uh, signs more sci-fi than eleven twenty-two sixty-three. Yeah, I kind of question whether he should have actually shown the aliens. I think it might have been a little more suspenseful and might have been better for the movie if he had never actually shown any of the aliens and maybe just you know shown their hands and feet like he did. I think uh, I think the movie was worse off, especially. The the first glimpse of the alien that we get that looks like a mangy Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't disagree with that. And if out of everything in this movie, the the aliens is not it, that's what didn't stand the test of time. Yeah, Rob, you got a haiku for us. I do. Well, lay it on um, us. This. Is called Corn Signs. Graham Hess saw the sign and it opened up his eyes. Yep, that's Ace of Base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good one. Good one. That's awesome. I used to listen to Ace of Base. I did too. They were hot yeah, in the 90s. Dude, they I, were. I listened, I listened to the music or watched the music video for the sign just for this show. Oh, man, I have had an Ace of Base song stuck in my head for the last couple of weeks for some reason. It's odd that we're talking about it Why? now. Oh, that she yes, wants. Yes, that's it. Is another baby. That's, She's that's got exactly the, the, the fucking song. All that she wants is oh another baby. That's hey. Hey. I hate that song. I do, too. Hey, I don't know why so it's much. stuck in my head. I'll wake up with that fucking thing in my head. It's weird. It's Why? Totally, I don't Dude, know. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> His wife is playing Ace of Base while he sleeps. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past her. Some, some sort of subliminal thing she's working on. I've heard she, you apparently imitate she's, me. Apparently, I've heard you imitate me. I'm not, I, you're going to listen to or, this sleep. Or, or he's got that particular song stuck because he wants another baby. No, fuck But she's that gone tomorrow. Bullshit. And she's gone tomorrow. Yeah. Hey. hey. <laughs> Oh, who's got awards? Who's got your black lung award, Rob? Uh, I'm giving it to Merrill for taking a drag right before self-quarantining. Okay. James? Yep. That was the only other person I saw smoking uh, as well. So, yes. Yep. Merrill's getting my black lung. Uh, James, who's got your head lush? Richard Dawson, because I didn't see anybody else drink. Okay, Rob? Um, I'm giving it to Bo because she had a drinking problem. She did. She did. <laughs> Good one. Um, so mine's going to go to Merrill again because uh, the shot of him in the little apartment above the garage, you can see some uh, whiskey bottles up on his uh, cabinet. So apparently he's uh, he's got a drinking thing going as well. So other than that, nobody else drank in this, this movie, which was kind of dull. Rob, who's got your player award? I gave it to Uncle Merrill in his swimsuit special. <laughs> James? He was playing with himself. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, mine goes to Meryl, but because he dodged the making out with vomit chick. Okay. Mine's going to go to the army recruiter because he's got some kind of foot fetish thing. He immediately <laughs> went to, why aren't you in the big leagues with women yep. licking all over making, your toes? Yeah, making stacks of cash and women licking your toes. Yeah. Yeah, he sure did. Yep. I don't know if that's a, that's more like a something Rob would say, and I'm not sure that's really a plan. I'm not into toes. <laughs> yeah. Now ankles. Oh. All right, what James. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's got your purple <laughs> hippo. Jesus fucking Rob does for his goddamn ankle fetish. <laughs> hey, don't fetish no. shame. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We don't, we don't kink shame here. <laughs> we don't kink shame here. Uh, uh, my purple hippo. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, my my purple hippo. Oh, man, th- so this was a hard one for me because I kind of wanted to give it to Riggs for his his uh, crisis of faith because that that's a mind fuck in and of itself. Uh, but I'm going to give it to. His his dead wife, who was having some kind of weird uh, uh, time travel incident, apparently, when she told Meryl to swing away. Okay, Rob? Um, I'm going to give it to Meryl for watching TV under the stairs and seeing aliens. But ev- the, how is that a purple hippo? Because um, the whole world okay, had so, it because the whole world was watching the same thing. Okay, so let's take away the scene, aliens. Um, I'm just doing it for watching TV under the stairs, and he looked really out of his mind about it. Okay, but all right, I, I suppose that's fair because I again, everybody. It's my watching. award. Shut uh, the whatever, fuck up. You can do whatever you want with your <laughs> stupid award. You're fucking dumb. All right, so my purple hippo is going to go to Meryl and all three kids for sitting on the couch with their tinfoil hats. While watching, but everybody was aliens. doing that. How is that? How is that different? Yeah. That's not that with tinfoil hats. I don't think everybody was doing it with tinfoil hats. Where do you think Alex Jones got the idea from? This movie. I don't think he got the idea from this movie because Art Bell was talking about tinfoil hats and bullshit long before this movie came out. I don't know what you have against Art Bell. Okay, I don't have the anything against dead. Art Bell. He's dead, and he did a he did a fantastic job with uh, that. That show. Ghost His Ghost show AM. was entertaining whenever it was the only thing on in the middle of the night and on AM radio. Yeah. It still is the only thing on in the middle of the night <laughs> on AM radio. So it's still entertaining. It was something to pass the time. Yeah. I listened to a fuck ton of Art Bell in my younger days because I was out in the middle of nowhere where all I could get was AM radio and I was up in all night. So. Yeah, so, but I, so if you, you call that to Amarillo, it, right? <laughs> I don't understand how you don't believe in some of this shit. Because it's Sasquatch, all fucking real. stupid. Sasquatch, real. No. Aliens, real. No. Time travel, real. God. Hello? Yes, it is. Oh, oh my God. I get to pick the number today. You get to pick the number? I think so. Yeah, yeah, you do. I get to tell you to stop. Yeah. I'll let you guys hammer that out while I get the file open. We've we've it's already hammered, hammered out. it out. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I'm picking the number. He's saying stop. It's, you just need us to fill time. You just need dead space taken up, don't you? No, uh, why can't. don't you talk about more about Ace of Base, Rob? Please don't. Um, I'm a base <laughs> in please mind. Don't, please don't. Oh my God, I hate you. Both. <laughs> uh, Ace of Base. All right, Rob. What's your number? Uh, I am going to go with um, uh, 83. 83. Yeah, because you didn't give me a range. Oh, you so. want a range? Okay. Yes, let's, I do. Let's get you a range. Give me, All right. You've got to go 1 to 141. Okay. I'm going to choose 83. All Damn right. it, Crowley. Well, how, how does that even? Like, everybody do that. Uh, Rob, could you sing some Ace of Bass for us while I decide when to stop? Don't do it. I saw the sign. Oh, God, it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Please say right, stop. Please Life stop. is demanding <laughs> without stop, understanding. He said stop. No, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> he said stop. And? Number 83. Give me just a sec. I got to fucking sort it and then go through all this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, sweet God. God. He hates Damn it. it. It's yep. normally good. Yep, Absolutely. Wait, um, wait, this isn't a series, is it? Because no. we did 
It's okay, not yeah, a we fucking series. We did say no series. What is it? God damn it. So next week, we're going to discuss the movie where the heroic warrior battles against the evil lord and his armies of darkness for control of Castle Grayskull. <laughs> oh, Masters of the Universe. Yeah, it's 1987's Masters uh, of the Universe. The one that we just put on the fucking list a few weeks ago against my fucking will. Oh my god. I hate this movie. I fucking hate Wait. this movie. Okay, so what is it? My internet cut out. What is it? Yo, uh, Masters of the Universe. Oh, why did you tell him? Oh we could have just wrapped it up and fuck. he would have never known. No, no, do it again. Roll again. I, I'm calling it Audible. Let's uh, roll it again. Let's yeah, go roll with my it again. second number. Yeah, fuck this. Um, <laughs> I'll choose a new number. Yeah. That's not how no. this works. No, no, we're doing no. it. You know, we're doing no, it. fuck no. that. You guys put this on the motherfucking list. I did not put this the on the fuck fucking fuck you list. didn't. I did not. The I think fuck you, know you did. didn't. I, you did. I will pull up that fucking audio because this and Space Truckers got put on the fucking list. And I'm I'd the one that I'd rather watch Space Truckers. I put Space Truckers on the list. I said we could do Space Truckers. Oh, he said fuck. Masters of the Universe. Because uh-huh. he said it was more sci-fi than whatever the hell we were watching at that point. Uh-huh. Was it 11 It might have been. It yeah, might have been. Yeah, that was right. Yeah, it is. But I'd, I'd, I'd rather watch Rob sing Ace of Base for three hours. Well, that can be too bad because care. we're going to watch Masters of the Universe <laughs> starring Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langella, and Meg Foster. Perfect. You You're reap welcome. what you fucking sow, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till Space Trekkers comes out. <laughs> God damn it. And that's all we got for this week. Our intro and outro music is Welcome Home by Cambo. Podcrawl music is Snack Mix My Machette. If you like the show, please rate and review oh, us on iTunes. Won't. You can. There's another baby. <laughs> She's coming <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I, was, I was doing the outro music yeah, for no, you. Uh, you can leave us feedback on our Discord channel at smokinganddrinkinginspace.com <laughs> forward slash Discord. On Twitter at status underscore podcast, or you can email us at smokinganddrinkinginspace at outlook.com. If you'd like to throw a few nickels our way, become a Patreon supporter by going to smokinganddrinkinginspace.com forward slash Patreon. You can visit... The more money you give us, the less Rob sing. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> we're going to get so many people now. So. <laughs> you can visit Creative Brain Candy for more great shows and other creative works at creativebraincandy.com. And for this week, I am Jason. Is douchebag a curse word? I don't know. It Use is, it in a n- sentence. Rob's a douchebag. Yes, it's a curse. Damn. That was my out. Rob's a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yes, talk so. to you next week. Is the bass in your mind? <laughs> what? Oh, that's another Ace of Base song. I have never heard that one. I those are the only on, two Ace of Base songs I know. Yeah, oh. pretty much. Oh In man, fact, my those first, are the only two Ace of Base songs anyone knows, including dude, Ace of Base. <laughs> my first, yeah, right. My first CD I ever bought was Ace of Base. Ah, uh, that says a lot. I it know, really isn't that does. ridiculous? I, I bought. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember the first the first CDs that I bought. Uh, Def Leppard. Uh, I Metallica, Def Leppard. There was something else, and uh, and then um, Billy Ray Cyrus. What did was you that? just we say, Billy Ray Cyrus? He did. he did. I bet you it was Achy Breaky Heart. <laughs> it was. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does that uh, one go again, James? I don't. I don't fucking know. You do too. I, I really don't. So here's the thing. My parents said I could, you know, uh, listen to rock music when I grew up in a pretty strict religious household. I could listen to rock music, uh, but I had to uh, uh, be eclectic with what I listened to. So I had a, I threw in <laughs> Billy Ray Cyrus just so I could get Metallica. Uh, I think the other one was Megadeth uh, and uh, Def Leppard. That's a really good cover story. You should stick with that one. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah but it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. I hate you both. So my black lung. <laughs> <laughs>